Welcome to Revive at Home. Uh, I've got a great message for you today. I hope it's going to stir you and make you think. <clears throat> Listen to this little quote. Opportunity does not waste time with those who are unprepared. <laughs> Don't ask me who said it because the name is like this long Japanese looking name, but let me say it again. Opportunity does not waste time with those who are unprepared. We need to be prepared for what God is doing. And I really hope to kind of set you up with some ideas of how you can be best prepared for the things that God is doing right now. One of the great difficulties of change is that many of us have years of experience and we end up living quite predictable pathways and coming up with quite predictable solutions. But actually, we've got to have more than our memory banks to go on if we're going to enter new days with God. And so <clears throat> I want to give you several ways that you can prepare your life to be as flexible as possible. I've heard that palm trees, I used to live in the Mediterranean, palm trees, when they flex, they're able to go all the way down and sometimes even touch the ground and spring back up again. And the more they flex, the deeper their roots go. Let's be a palm tree in the house of the Lord, right? Uh, not something that is brittle and easily broken when the tough winds of change come, but rather those who can flex. So let me give you several ways that are going to help you to be a flexible Christian in all that God is doing. Number one, be well traveled. If the only church you've ever experienced is a couple of really local ones and you've never really engaged with what the church looks around the world in different cultures, the persecuted church versus the comfortable Western church, consumerist church, or those who are really living as radical remnant in places around the world, maybe you've bought into the uh, to the Sunday church concept. And I kind of pop along once every two or three weeks and I feel like I'm doing my bit to top up my faith, but that's it. When actually God's calling us to a seven day a week adventure with him. If you've fallen into the more brittle place of, I attend a couple of local churches in my lifetime, I, I really don't experience the far reaches of prayer or different times to meet with God or different ways if I'm just used to a certain kind of church and I live based around my preferences, then you are going to be more brittle. The more well-traveled you are so that you can discern the difference between cultural pieces and what is really God, between what is just temporary method but what is really holy if you're not well traveled you won't be able to spot those things but when you are when you find yourself in an african church culture in a south american church culture in a chinese church culture and you're seeing that some things they do that they consider completely normal is wildly unusual for you if you're not immersed in some of that travel you're going to find change in god more difficult be well traveled even even if you don't physically go to different expressions of church across the world, be well read, be well podcasted, use YouTube, meet and connect with all the wonderful multivaried types of church and Christian and ministry around the world. And you will realize that a lot of what we do is just how we're working our faith around the current culture, which is completely normal. But the wonderful thing about the true gospel is it shapes its way around cultural things, especially if, if they're neither ho holy nor unholy, they're just things, then cultures shift when we meet, how we meet, what we do, how loud or quiet it is, how long we go on for, how we enjoy our faith, big group, small group. It all can adjust when we realize that the gospel is able to just maneuver around all of that stuff. When change hits you in your model of church to shift to another one, if you're too brittle and not well-traveled enough, often there's a breaking comes because we've actually put our faith in a model and a culture and not in the actual gospel. So number one, be well-traveled and you'll be flexible. Number two, be big-hearted. Listen to this verse from Proverbs. It's Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart, for out of it flow all the issues of life. 
It's so easy in life, especially a time like we've had the last couple of years, to end up a bit grumpy, a bit disappointed, perhaps cynical. Uh, I know I've been there. You're just tired and our hearts can begin to shrivel within us and we can go from being positive and upbeat to actually quite cynical and critical and that is really going to affect your destiny. I completely sympathize with everybody that says no more change please God. I want everything back as it was because we're tired and we feel thin and brittle and feel like giving up but listen do all you can to guard your heart because your life will be a product of your heart so look after it really well by saying I'm going to be big hearted I'm going to keep stretching in the areas of generosity I'm going to be generous with my money generous with my praise generous with encouragement I'm going to bridle my mouth and really control where my lips take me in life I refuse to become a cynic and critical disappointed and disillusioned no I'm going to keep filling myself with the goodness and the hope of God how do you get through a hard time in God? You keep filling up on the hope found in the word of God, the hope found in the place of worship and encounter. And you hang around people of faith and say to yourself, I'm going to be that. I'm going to be resilient. I'm going to stay big hearted. I refuse to become shriveled and cynical and jealous and envious. I am going to be big hearted. Make that decision and you will do well in a season of change. This one I suppose is a little bit for leaders. Stay organizationally mobile. If you're really into method and you can only see God through a certain way of doing things, it has to be, you know, a Sunday morning with some fast songs and some slow songs and a preach and an end and we kind of build our church life around that and a few other pretty predictable groups and activities, you're going to struggle in a time of change stay organizationally flexible and mobile too. Number four, value intimacy above method. If we're truly walking with God, then we are able to hear his voice for what he wants to do now. It's no good just relying on a word from 20 years ago. Sometimes you need to do that because you're holding out for a promise. But if it's an instruction from 20 years ago, well, there may have been five further instructions that we've missed since then because God keeps talking. He leads us even through the valley of the shadow of death. Personally, he's right there guiding us. So we need to be listening every day for that day's instructions from heaven. And so we've got to value intimacy above our methods, realizing the, inti realizing the intimacy is a holy thing we carry with us every day and every moment. But method is just what we need to do now in this time to get the job done with God. So love intimacy. When Moses didn't value intimacy above method, he, 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 he fell for an old method of if I strike the rock in the desert, it'll gush with water because it worked the first time when God said to do it. But when God said, just speak to the rock, but Moses was stuck in method and he struck the rock like he'd done before. Guess what? The miracle happened. It gushed forth with water. But God said, because you struck it instead of speaking, which is what I told you to do, you're not going in the promised land. That's how important God thinks intimacy and obedience to his voice is versus just living in our methods and our ways of doing things. So let's stay in the place of intimacy, even more so in a time of change, because everything's shifting and we need to be listening to his voice. I journal all the time. And it, it, the, the, the value I find in sitting down with a pad and a pen and just writing down what I think God is saying. Wow, I surprise myself all the time when I was, oh, God's been saying this, that, the other. This is changing, this is shifting. It's how he maneuvers us. He's, he's like a voice just behind us saying, this is the way walk in it. Value intimacy above history and above method and you'll be able to go far with God. Number five, develop a palate for the new. Listen to this scripture, Luke 5, 37, Jesus speaking. He says this, no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the new wine will burst the skins, the, the wine will run out and the wineskin will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. This is the bit I want. Listen to this. No one after drinking old wine, wants the new. 
for they say the old is better. The word literally means easier. Luke 5, 37 to 39. Nobody wants new wine. You want old, mellow, used to it. All my neural pathways automatically go that way. I feel comfortable and confident because it's old. It's like that old sofa that you love but you don't realize has become really quite scruffy and everyone else can see it. <laughs> That's how I think of it. We love old and comfortable. The duvet of history. Nobody, when they taste the new wine of what God is doing, will go, oh yeah, let's have that. No, this is human nature now. It's a beautiful picture of human nature. No, we're going to want the old and the comfortable. So listen, we have to develop a mature palate that enjoys the new because of what it can do, not because of how it makes us feel. The way God is going to lead us if we're going into new things is it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel complex. We're going to feel like amateurs again instead of experienced Christians who know what they're doing. We're, we're realizing again that we're under orders. We're not that competent. We are kids under God's guidance, just faithfully trusting him and taking this wonderful journey of trust with him. Uh, and so you come to that place where everything you know, gives you nerves again. And it's, oh, what are we doing? And where are we going? That's what new things feel like. Learn to love the feeling of putting the L plates back on again, because it means adventure is being had. New neural pathways are being laid. Everything's being rewired. Things are going off in your mind because it's new. New is good for you. It's good for you biologically, psychologically, and it's good for us theologically as we follow God into the future. So you, you've got to buy into the fact that, come on, new, experimenting, prototypes, trying, doing things a different way is a good way to be because you're going to be flexible, you're going to live longer, you're going to have greater adventures, and you just might find some veins of absolute gold of how to live for God. So go for the new. Just a couple more. Number six, develop new alignments. When you sense a new day coming, line yourself up with those who are roughly where you think the future might be for you, because it's going to grow some new stuff in your heart when you do. Proverbs 13, 20, he who walks with the wise grows wise, but a friend of fools suffers harm. You need to, in life, choose different people to walk with when the purpose changes, when it adjusts. New purpose needs new partners. I say it again, new purpose needs new partners. What new alignments do you need that are really going to empower you for the future? And they're going to help take away some of those nerves about where you're going. You need new influences if you're going into a new day. If there's something on your heart, some dream, something that gets your pulse racing that you know that's something to do with my future, what you might be feeling is, but I don't quite feel brave enough to go there. Well, you need to go find someone who is brave enough. Maybe they've gone ahead of you. Maybe they're two, three, four years ahead of you, or even 20. You hang out with them and your bravery will grow and you'll be able to stretch into new days together. Amen. And finally, number seven, never stop seeking God's face. When a time of change comes, Sometimes we have to stop the routine. The diary becomes so full of what the last command of God told us to do that we don't have space to hear the next command. When you sense something is over, begin to admit to yourself, it's over, right? I need to start clearing the desks and getting ready for what God wants to do next. Be willing to give God a Saturday, an evening, a night in prayer, um, some small seasons of prayer and fasting. Say, I'm going to give a week or I'm going to do 21 days partial fast and I'm going to give my lunch break to go seek God or something. I'm going to do that extra to clear the decks and hear God again for the future. Seek his face and you'll be flexible and ready for the future. Well, there you go. Seven ways to be flexible and ready to walk into all that God wants you to do. Here come the questions. Have a great discussion and a great time of prayer.